Hello! Kumusta po uli kayo? Natutuwa naman ako at patuloy pa rin niyo pong sinusubaybayan ang ating Heart to Heart with Singles. Isang pagninilay, mga kaalaman na dinadalangin ko na magpataba ng inyong puso. Na dumating ang pagkakataon na maranasan mo ang pinakamagandang karanasan sa paglalakbay natin sa buhay na ito. Ang karanasan na tay umibig at tay ibigin ang magmahal at suklian ng pag-ibig at pagmamahal ang ating handog na pag-ibig sa iba kung kaya nga patuloy pa rin tayo dun sa segment natin about falling in love wherein we're trying to at least name conditions that make someone fall in love with your soul Minamahal ko, the other time, when we were together, we were talking about the basic attitudes of being real. Being real. This time, or getting real. This time, let's get it on. When we speak of getting on, getting it on, what we're going to talk about is more on being likable by not being unlikable. If you want somebody to fall in love with your soul, you have to start with making him or her fall in love with your soul. And as I said, there, there is one way of making a person fall in love with you. It's making him or her like you first. I tell you, try as much as possible to understand this type of presentation because being likable is not just about being in a relationship or being in love. Remember, a successful life, whether in career, in our personal life, even in religious life, hinges on relationship. And for one to establish a genuine, meaningful, and lasting relationship, one of the key foundation of it is being likable. If you are well liked, ah, your business will thrive. If you are well liked, especially by your superiors, in your corporate uh, setting, then chances are you'll become you'll be given more responsibilities. Trust is easily bestowed upon you and you'll have a better chance of being promoted than the one who is very much disdained by other people. And even religious life. A well-liked priest commonly gets more donation, I tell you. A well-liked priest commonly has more churchgoers. A well-liked priest have more friends. A well-liked priest finds his authority not just on his title, but on the quality of relationship he was able to establish with his parishioners. Kung kaya nga, uh, being likable is a solid foundation in, in living a good life. Kaya, our first objective is not to be unlikable. Because the moment you become unlikable, people withdraw, people would avoid you, and with little people in your life, it's a very lonely existence. With little people surrounding you, whatever effort, whatever challenge you might face, whatever endeavor is asked of you, you will do it all alone. When in fact, you cannot do it all alone. We need people in our life. What's the use? What's the use of having everything that you want? 
when you have nobody to share it with because they don't want to be with you. Kaya, let's continue. Getting on, getting it on. More on the tr- transactions, the conversations, and the, the thing we have. Basic vibes with other people. So, have you experienced that? I guess you did. And it's quite often that we experience we meet unlikable people. And you began to ask why. Wala namang ganap na ginawang mali sa iyo yung taong yon. Wala namang masama na talagang ginawa na kinasira ng buhay mo. But parang something is off that you find yourself distancing for the person. And for whatever reason, there is that feeling of dislike to this person. Have you asked why? I tell you, let me name some of the qualities of the unlikable. Something that we have to really avoid when we deal with other people. Let me name them. Basically, there are two types of people who are not liked by others. The first one, of course, are the people who don't make an impression and therefore are not proactively like or dislike. Sila na walang dating. Diba? Wherein they never leave a significant mark in your life as you journey with the person. Sila na wala lang. Naroon siya, wala siya, hindi mo siya like, hindi mo rin dislike. Parang wala lang. Di ba? There are times that we meet people like that. Na, Narian, maula, okay lang. They never left a significant mark as you join with a person. Kaya, sa isang banda, they're not like by others. Perhaps hindi sila ganun nagka- nag-effort. O talagang wala lang kadating-dating. Pero, Definitely, the one we remember but we dislike are the people who are so obnoxious, so rude that they instantly push you away from them. Diba? Ang tawag natin dito yung mga masama talagang ugali. Magaspang ang pag-uugali. Kaya, Sociability starts with friendliness. That's why, if you want to be like, you have to dump the unfriendly traits. At, as I said, nga pala, tandaan nyo, a lot of good marriages begin with good friendship. And what made this marriage work is the quality of their friendship. That's why we have to invest in making friends. And we have to exert effort to really dump and avoid those unfriendly traits that at times, unknowingly, we practice. So, let me now start naming them. These are the traits that stand out as being unlikable. The first one is taking credit for someone else's work. If someone's idea, something, or a person breaches a topic, give them credit for the idea. One of the easiest way to end a conversation is saying, Oh yeah, I heard that already. And I also heard, now you monopolize the conversation. Wherein, through this, you will alienate the one who is speaking. I remember a story that says like this, Nagsasermon daw yung pare. Sabi daw nung pare ay, ang Diyos ay pag-ibig. Sabi nung isa ay, ah, pader, alam ko na yan. At nagpatuloy yung pare. Ang Diyos ay pag-ibig at si Jesus na kanyang anak ay naghaalay na kanyang buhay para sa katubusan ng kanyang iniibig. Dahil ah, Father, alam ko na yan. 
sinabi ng pari, at itinatag niya ang simbang ito para ipagpatuloy ang pag-ibig ng Diyos. Father, wala bang bago? Alam ko na yan. Ay napiko ng pare. Kaya sabi ng pare, putang ina mo, isa pa, oo pa ka na kita. Kaya sabi ng lalaki, yun, father, yun ang bago. Sige, father, pag-usapan natin yan. Truly, it pieces off somebody when he's trying to express himself or herself, his or her ideas, and you take credit for it. Like, for example, if you're in a corporate setting, ang galing mo humingi ng report, ang galing mo ng magpa-evaluation, puro paperworks, puro paperworks, pagkatapos you take credit for it, as if lahat ito'y ginawa mo at hindi ng staff mo. Sabi ko sa iyo, if you're like a, a, a boss like that, I tell you, people will be ne- will never be enamored with you. Kaya, the next is, discrimination or stereotyping. Simple enough, don't say anything rude about someone else's race, gender, age, sexual orientation, or any other differences. It's rude. It's close-minded. And will almost always offend someone else. Discrimination goes even further if you make a decision about someone based on anything but key elements. Diba? Like for example, lalo na tayong mga Tagalog, pag minsan, yun, may ugali tayong gaya. Kuripot eh. Paano? Ilocano. Diba? Ay kaya naman pala, Bicol. Bisaya yan. Minsan, tunay may mga karanasan tayo na tumutugma doon sa ilang mga stereotypes natin tungkol sa mga tribong pinagmula ng bawat isa, pero hindi nangangahulugan na isang tao eh, gayon eh, nagmula ron eh, ganun na siya. Kaya ang dami, tandaan ninyo, ang dami na nahadlagang makalapit kay Jesus sa simpleng Thailand. Pero bang mabuting nagmumula na taga Nazaret? Kaya kita natin how discrimination alienate people. Especially if you are demeaning their state of life. Kaya, yun yung kasunod. Talking down to other people. Talking down to someone in a position deemed lower than yourself is a sure way to alienate everyone you meet. Pag ang pinakawakan mo ay ang otoridad mo. O lagi ang tingin mo sa'yo, paano ba mga hampas lupa yan eh? O lalo na, you go out dating at nagkamali yung waiter o yung waitress sa maliit na bagay Nagpuputak ka na, umasa ka. Yung kadate mo, mateturn off sa'yo. Lalo na kung makikita ang hinahamak mo ang ibang tao. At kung ito yung tao na hinamak mo, uy, makingat ka. Baka yung hinahamak mo, hindi mo alam ang tunay na pagkatao. Malay mo yung hinahamak mo at minamaliit mo. Yan pa ang makatuluyan mo. Malay mong hinamak mo. Kamag-anak pala ng bibianan mo. Paano pag nagtagpo kayo? Di ba? Kaya, maging magalang kahit sa inyong kaharap. Dahil sabi ko sa'yo, pag nanghamak ka ng kapwa mo, kahit yung ibang taong nakatingin dito, tsya, hindi magiging maganda ang impresyon tungkol sa'yo. Kaya, Kung mapapalampas mo, palampasin mo na. Okay lamang magkamali ang kapwa natin dahil ikaw may nagkakamali rin. Ganun din. Inappropriate jokes, especially if it's mocking. Making jokes or mocking someone is unfriendly in any situation. Lalo na kung ginawa mo ang isang tao, nakakatuwa. Kung ginamit mo ang isang tao para pagtawanan. Kaya mahalaga pala 
na maging maingat din sa pagbibiro. Okay lamang ito kung malalim na ang inyong ugnayan. Pero, pag una pa lamang, ah, medyo konting dahan-dahan. Kasi hindi mo alam kung kailang ka nakakasagasa na. Ganon din, maraming tao talagang nate-turn off sa mga samlang. Samlang. Kaya, tanda mo, una-una sa pangangatawan, ha? Sa pangangatawan. Anak, pag may putok ka, hindi lang tatawanan ka, lalayo ang ka. Kaya, get some friends who would give you honest feedback. Yung kaya sa pagmalasakita ka, friend, ang tapang na sumapi sa iyong espiritu. Hmm? At least, you could adjust. Baka kay katapat lang naman niya pabango o kung talagang masamang espiritu ang sumapi sa iyo, walang nagagamot ang tawas. Napapalayas ang masamang espiritu. Kaya, tingnan mo, baka naman yung tenga mo ay puro tutuli. Yung batok mo ay pagkaitim ng himaing-himaing. Ang, oy, some guys, tinitingnan mga iha, ang sakong nyo. Dahil ang sabi ng matatanda, ang mga maiitim daw ang sakong na hindi malang nahihilod ay mga samlang na babae. Pati yung inyong sasakyan, ha? ang inyong kwarto, ang inyong bahay, aba anak, walang natutuwa sa taong samlang. Ha? Kaya, maging malinis. Huwag tapo ng tapo ng basura. May mga taong napakapartikular na pag nakita ang isang tao ay ganong kairesponsable, patay kang bata ka. May tara ka na sa kanya. At mahirap ng baguhin pa yun. Ganon din. Marami talaga na turn off sa isang tao na habang kausap mo, cellphone ng cellphone. Nakaharap ka, Pagkatapos, ang inaatupag ay yung gadgets nila. Na para bagang walang halaga. I remember one time, may nililigawan ako noon. Oh, yun ay minahal ko. Nakong nagkataon, makakatuluyan ko. So, nag-effort ako. Pumunta ako sa bahay nila, binisita ko siya, may dala akong chocolates noon. Hindi pa naman uso ang cellphone nung. No? Pero ang ginawa ay, tinulugan ako. Okay. Diyos ko, ang ito. Hindi ba akong mahalaga na narito at nag-effort ako para bisitahin, samahan siya? Tapos, tinulugan ako. Tanda ko nun, ako'y tinawagan ng ama. Oh, ano bang nangyari sa iyo? Ikaw daw eh, wala. Sabi ko, Tito, I'm sorry. Tulugan ba naman ako ng anak mo? Kakaisulto naman po. Kasi gano'n ang dating, pag parang sinasabi mo, mas mahalaga itong bagay na ito, mas mahalaga itong kaluguran ko, kaysa ikaw nakaharap ko. Kaya, pag may kausap ka, ano kaya di ba ba mo ang cellphone? Gusto mo isang makapangyarihan? Na gagawin mo, especially among you guys, may kaharap ka, whether prospect mo, o kahit sinong tao na lumapit sa'yo at may idinudulog sa'yo, lalo na kung problema ito. You know, one powerful act that you could do is take off your watch. Pagkatapos, itawag mo sa'yo mesa habang kaharap mo siya. Sabi ko sa'yo, magiging iba ang pagtingin nun sa'yo. Kasi sinasabi mo, Pinakamahalagang pagkayamanan ko sa buhay ay ang aking panahon. At mas pinili kita kaysa sa oras ko na hindi kayang tumbasan ng anumang halaga. Ganon din. Patronizing. This is something that happens a lot to parents, especially those who are impatient. Just because your five-year-old child needs a bit of help, a bit of help understanding a new concept, does not mean your co-workers or a person you meet in a bar or in a chance meeting, eh, kailangan na nila 
na ano, na pagsabihan mo. Utang na loob, hindi ka nanay niya, hindi ka tatay niya. Na ikaw ay ito explain na explain. Pinagpapayuhan mo naman agad, pero hindi naman nagtatanong sa'yo. Doon ni Job, pag minsan na ako eh, feeling pare, feeling tatay. Pag minsan, yan, kinatitisuran ko yan. Dahil, pag minsan ay, pag may nakita kong anak, ano ba yan? Bakit? Kahit hindi ko kilala, lalapit ako pag minsan sa ko. Kanina pa kita napansin, parang mukhang malungkot ka. <laughs> Siguro kaligali sa minsan ng taong ito. Tangin na ito, ang pakilam mo ka sa buhay ko. Pero, at times, uh, meron akong ganyang ugali. I know for some, is, it's para bagang uh, intrusive already. Pero, minsan, uh, salamat sa gusto ko, nagdadalang hiyari naman, lalo at hindi ko talaga kilala. Pero pag minsan, hindi ka mapagilan ng sarili ko, pag yung naramdaman ko na parang, siguro, eh, para feeling ko, kailangan ako ng tao, pari ako, So, pero anak, pag minsan, ha? my dear girls, hindi kayo nanay niya. Kaya huwag mo naman tawagin babes. Mga pa babes, babes ka pa. Ituring mo siya bilang lalaki. Hindi ka nanay niya magpupulis na siya ang magbabag- magbabago ng kanyang buhay na tulad ng kanyang ina. No. Tapos nagtataka ka ngayon, bakit parang iniiwasan ka nito? Kasi, what men wants is a partner, a friend, not a mommy. And, will, will you seriously date and even marry a guy who treats you as if you are his mom? Naksakit ng ulo yan pag nakatuluyan mo. Kaya anak, ang sasabihin ko sa'yo, No, don't be patronizing. Treat him as he is. At times it helps. Or pag misan, hayaan mo siya. At times it helps. Eye rolling and sarcasm. Misan, paborito ko yan eh. Diyo <laughs> pag misan, pag ako eh, uh, patawarin ako ng mga nagagawa ko nito Pero pag minsan, pag may sinasabi talagang uh, parang tingin ko yun, pagkatangan naman ito. Napaka makasarili naman, egotistical naman ito. Eh pag minsan, ang tatay nyo eh, na natasang kila ito. Uh, umatake na naman ang factory defect ng aming kapatid. He said, uh, just go. Ano ba naman ang taong ito? Ang hangad na lang niya ay papurihan, papurihan. And, chule. Sarcasm like that could offend the person pag nakita ka. Kaya kung mo ipapakita. Pero kaya pagkaharap mo, basta nakamiti ka lang. Kasi pag nakita, sabi ko sa iyo, maring hindi ka lalong maibigan. pagkayabang naman ito. Eh di kayo nakangiti na lang ang nagayaan. Oh, sige, dama, dama, dama. Akala mo, hindi ko alam ang racket mo sa buhay. So at least, ang ibig ko sabihin doon ay, at as much as possible, try to avoid being sarcastic. Di ba? Ganun din, Walang nakakaibig sa isang tao na wala nalang ginawa kundi magreklamo. Nang committee lagi niya sa anumang grupo ay committee on criticism. Committee ng pula at lait. Anak, if your tone of voice, if everything that comes of your mouth is about complaining and whining. It would upset people around you. And people doesn't want to. <coughs> Or people are not entertained by whiners, by complainers. 
because they don't want to feel bad. All of us want to feel good at any given situation. Kaya pag ang kaharap mo ay wala na lang nakita kundi yung negative side ng isang pangyayari o ng isang tao at doon na lamang umikot. And I tell you, a lot of unlikable people naman talaga is always the center of every conversation. Na pag nagkatipon-tipo ng mga tao, siya talaga ang pag-uusapan sa simpleng dahilan because everybody are complaining against the unlikable. However, if you're going to start it and you are not sure that all the people in front of you share the same sentiment, anak, wag na. Wag mo na pasukin. Dahil baka ito maghindaan para ikaw ay kaiyamutan. Ganun din. Yung tao na may tantrums, yung mahiling manigaw, yung lagi na lang kumagalit eh nagdadabog, nagtatapon ng mga bagay na hawak sa kanyang kamay. Naakala mo ay kailangan talaga na lahat ng gusto niya, pordoletra, masundan, umasa ka. Na sa isang pagkakamali kay galit, umasa ka. Hindi ka kawiwilihan. Kaya, katulad nun, isa mong pa'y paghamak, oh, patay kang bata ka dyan. Kaya yabutang ka. Kaya, lalo na kung gusto mong maging kabahagi ng buhay yung kaharap mo, minsan timpiin mo ang galit mo. Minsan pigilan mong ipakita ang galit mo. At kung magagalit ka man, hindi ito kasalanan. Pero ipahayag mo sa pamaraang katanggap-tanggap sa mata ng mga nakakasaksi sa bawat gagawin. Ganun din. Walang hihigit pa na pamamaraan upang ikay may bigan ng isang tao. Ay ito, ang patayin mo sila ng kabutihan. It works every time. Sabi nga dito, they are easy icebreakers. Little acts of kindness, little acts of consideration and thoughtfulness. I remember Bishop Arguelles. What he did for us left a significant mark. But it's very simple. Ang laging, kain ka na, Father. Lagi nag-aalok ng pagkain. At pagkatapos, kukunin niya ang pinggan at kutsara at iabot sa iyo. Tapos sasabihin namin, Ay, Bishop, kain na po, kain na po. Ikaw na, una ka na, kain na ikaw. That little act of kindness, oh, it melts the heart. Why? Because here is our bishop giving us, serving us, good food. Nakakabawi doon eh. Ganun din, mga anak. Pag ikaw ay may kaugnayan sa isang tao, Ah, ibig ba, lumalim ang ugnahin mo sa isang tao, walang nagkamali sa pagpapakita ng buti at mait. Okay. So, reducing unfriendliness. In a conversation or a communication, these are the things you ought to avoid as much as possible. As I said, avoid being offensive. One of the fasting thing you could do to emotionally distance others from you is by putting him or her on the defense. On the defense. I remember when we were younger, 
sa Kristen pa ako. Merong isang pare, matandang pare, na namamalo ng kamay pag nagkamali ka ng abot, na ikaw mapapagalitan pag nagkamali ka at hindi tamang-tamang sa eksaktong pagkakataon ang pagbibel mo. And, at ito'y pagminsan ay lagi pang galit na pag may, kay, ang iingay nyo, lagi sasabihin sa amin nun. And I tell you, pag nagnisa ang matandang yun, wala sa amin ang gustong sumama. Pag magsaserve, ano sasabihin? Turuan na kami. Ikaw na, ikaw na. Yung, oh, oh. Ikaw na. No, iniiwasan namin siya. Kasi, it's not fun being with him. While at the same time, we've, I felt, uh, we felt, young boys that we are, that this person has the tendency of always offending our senses, sensitivities. Ay pagkakuripot pa. As compared dun sa isang pare na met maya ay may pa-ice cream sa amin. Dun sa pare na pag nagkamali, tatawa lang kami, eh, mali ka na naman kanina. Dun sa pare na pag ako'y nakita, ay, dahil, parinig ka. Les, mm. ah, how's your school? How's school? Tapos kakargahin pa ako nun. That time, malit akong bata eh. Kasi nag-serve na ako. Seven years old pa lang. Kakargahin na ako. Ah, kumusta ka na? Dudukot yun sa sutana niya? Because you always wear a cassock. Then may candy. Ah, eh, sige. Tatapikin na ako sa pisngi. Uwi ka ka bahay ha? And I tell you, awas kami sa owner niya pag siya magmimisa sa bukid. Sama kami sa kanya. Kasi nga, we feel welcome. We are appreciated. Kaya anak, as much as possible, avoid being offensive. Especially pag mag-date kayo. Huh? Huh? Dahil pag nakita niya na ikaw laging galit, lagi kang iyamang, hindi ka para maibigan. At saka, ito ba ang gusto mo mapangasawa? Yung lagi nala ang iyamot? Nakala mo eh, ipinaglihin ang kanyang ina sa disminoriya? No. Kaya avoid being defend, offensive. Anytime you place blame on others, they feel back into a corner. And as if nothing they say has an effect against what you're saying. Pag ikay wala ka ng ginawa, kundi manisi ng manisi ng manisi ng iba, mm-hmm. laging kahit hindi ako ang sinisisi mo, alam ko na kung paano mo ginawa yun sa taong yon. kaya mo rin gawin ito sa akin. Kaya, to protect myself, dinistansya sa iyo. Lalo na kung ang galing mong maghugas ng kamay, yung pag nagkaputo ka na, ako ang iaharang mo tagatanggap ng bala, ah, hindi maganda yun, anak. Ganun din. Para ikay higit na maibigan, as much as possible, avoid using y- you messages. When I say, lagi ka na lang, ikaw kasi. ba? Diba? Kaya mas magandang sabihin na, I messages. Lagi nagsisimula sa sarili. Mula sa sinasabi mo na ano, pahuli-huli ka na naman o late ka na naman bakit di mo sabihin na ano dalawang pangmaraan ano nangyari na late ka o oh, iba-iba ang dating di ba o dili kaya sabihin mo sa kanya na alam mo nasasaktan na ako nahihirapan ako at napapagod ng paghihintay sa iyo sapagkat parang walang halaga 
ang sandali, ang oras ko para sa iyo. Kaya pinaghihintay mo. Di ba? Makikita mo, ibang ibang dating kung nagmumula sa sarili mo ang mensahe mo kaysa sa para bagang hinunggusgahan mo na yung tao. Avoid insulting the other one. Using a language full of insult is one of the fastest way to turn your once healthy relationship into a destructive one. This is also known as contempt. Insult is any language or behavior that is threatening, demeaning, or below the belt. Just imagine this. There was this doctora who one time approached me to just vent her anger. Kasi pumunta daw sila ng department store ng mga pinsa niya. They went to the lingerie section. At yung isa niyang pinsang babae na naupakan siya ng ganito, bibili ka ng bra? Eh, wala ka namang babrahan. You know, for her, she felt insulted. Kaya sabi ko sa kanya, Oo, oh, eh, ano nga yung... May anak ka ah. Doktor ka pa. Ano't minamaliit mo naman ang sarili mo sa salitang binitiwa ng pinsan mo? Pero para sa kanya, she find it truly insulted by it. Kaya iwasan po natin yon because the moment we insult somebody, name calling begins. Lalo na, lalo na sa atin na ano, pag sinabihan mong syunga mo talaga, tatangat-tanga ka, bobo, umasa ka. Pag nagsabi ka bang, bakit? Hindi mo, hindi ba'y tinuro yan sa'yo? Umasa ka. The moment you insult somebody, it's a sort of declaration of war against that person. Ganon din, stonewalling. Stonewalling is when one person is so upset communicating, in communicating, or trying to explain their viewpoint on something and you dismiss them by ignoring them or shutting them out. This is called the silent treatment. Or millennials will call it ghosting. Yung para magandang may isa kang multo na tawag dito. Nanarihan ka, umiiral ka, pero wala kang halaga sa akin. And some people loves to do it. So what I'm trying to tell you is, it's better to be open and honest and sincere enough to really say what you are feeling rather than just clam yourself up and not speak at all. Ladies, although some men are also numbers, I tell you, Or perhaps they are not real men. That's why they nag. Pero, truly, nagging is a result of frustration, anger, or simply feeling you've exhausted everything else you can think of doing. So instead of asking for what you want, you whine, complain, criticize, and you keep on repeating yourself over and over for the thousand times. Sabi ko nga no, sa mga kaibigan ko, bakit may babaeng bungangerang paulit-ulit ang sinasabi nila? Inuulit kasi nila sa simpleng dahilan, pakiramdam nila sila hindi. Napapakinggan. Hindi balid na dahilan. Pero, sasabihin ko sa iyo, lalo na kung may halong mura pa, Pag paulit-ulit, may mura, may insulto pang kasama, hindi mo para pakinggan siya, di ba? Parang ganito, naranasan mo na ba na mamura ka? Siguro naman. Nakinig ka ba? With all honesty, ako, bakit ako makikinig? Ano ko si Raulo? Minumura ka na? Pakikinggan mo ba ba yun? Ano yung musika? 
It's a waste of time for me. Kaya sa iyo, eh, magdadakdak ka niya, magdadakdak ka. Wala pa namang namatay sa mura. Talo pikon, sabi ng matatanda. So, the first thing, you want to be likable? Then, build a friendly mindset. What causes us to be rude to someone we've never be met before? Scott Fitzgerald, the author of The Great Gatsby, said, It's not as long at you when people are rude. It's as long at the people they met before. Beautiful. Yung lagi ko siya sabi kayo sa mga couples natin, last uh, couples retreat we had, ano sabi ko sa kanila? Pag minsan, meron tayong mga nakakaharap na tao na mas gas, na magaspang ang pag-uugali nila sa simpleng dahilan. Sila'y may kasaysaya na pinagmalupitan. At pag minsan, yung mga bagay na damdami nung una, pag nakaharap ng pagkakataon at tao na animoy sumasalamin sa nakaraan niya, Ito'y parang bulkan sumasabog na pag minsan yung galit nung una sa iyo na ipapasa. Kaya pag minsan, pag tayo nakatagpo, why, the reason why we have to be to have a friendly mindset is because we don't know the person in front of us. And commonly, those who are rude, sarcastic, unlikable persons, are persons who are so wounded when they were young. And it takes mercy and compassion to remain friendly towards them. Kaya, keep an open mind, my dear brothers and sisters. Gusto mong ibigin ka niya? To be a likable person, you must keep an open mind, allowing yourself to accept what? and who other people are on their terms, not yours. The problem is in how we tend to analyze other people. We each have a worldview and ideas of decency that have been programmed from birth. When someone doesn't fit that worldview, which we judge them on a scale of, far, of how far from our ideal perspective they fall. Kung kaya nga, we are also biased at times. Kaya, be more open. Diba? Mas iba-iba pag medyo bukas ka. Ganon din, the generosity of the Spirit. When you're injured, unhappy, sad or angry, what is the first thing that you want? Someone who cares for you to sit by your side and listen to your concerns, right? Everyone searches for an empathetic ear to listen to your problems. The moment somebody showed you that compassion, that empathy, it makes those problems seem less encompassing and help you get on with life. So when trying to be likable, one of the primary goals should be to become that person. The man or woman who can throw all your worries and concerns out of the window and become instantly empathetic to someone else. Sabi dito, kung anong hinahanap mo sa panahon ng pagsak na bagsaka, nalulungbay ka't nasasaktan sa iyong kalooban, sa isang taong dadamay sa iyo. Sikapin yung maging gayon ka sa bawat tao na makakaharap mo. That generosity of the Spirit, I tell you, will work wonders. People will like you because everybody needs a friend when the world seems so unfriendly. And that generous offering of oneself to be your friend is the key on unlocking a person's heart. 
kaya. You have to learn honest empathy. Listen, react, listen, react, and care. Show that you care. Speaking of listening, listen to understand. When we say listen to understand, as humans, we fundamentally want and need to be understood. But being understood requires receptive listening on the other end. If we want others to understand us, we need to learn how to truly listen to and understand them. Too often we get caught up in our own agendas, concerns, and intentions, and listen only on the surface level. Strong listening skills are foundation of all solid relationships. My dear brothers and sisters, do you really want that person to like you? So us, hopefully, he or she falls in love with you. Be a good listener. Great conversationalists are not, yes, perhaps they are great speakers. They talk sense, they're wise, but you know, one quality of great conversationalists are persons who knows how to listen. Kaya anak, dalawang tenga natin, isa lang ang bibig, kaya makinig. Iibigin ka Maibigat maibigyan ka kung may papakita mo na naunawaan mo siya. At may papakita mong naunawaan mo siya kapag nakikinig ka. Kaya anak, by listening we can build trust, assess needs, identify interests and passions, discover commonalities, Tune into emotions and energy, determine communication preferences, uncover known and unidentified concerns of the other. Kaya, that's the value of listening. Kasi pag minsan, iniisip natin, para ako'y maibigat, kailangan mag-advertise ako. Ipakita ko kung sino ko, pakilala ko sino ko. Ipagmalaki ko ang sarili ko. But at times it backfires. Pwede kasing lumabas na tayo bulaan at nagyayabang. But if we listen, nakikita agad na, naipapakita natin na ano, mas mahalaga ka kaysa sa akin. At maibigan mo ko sa simpleng dahilan. Dahil ako'y nakinig sa iyo, naipakita ko sa iyo, na baka hindi may pakita ng lahat ng tao na ikaw ay mahalaga sa akin. Next is listen with your eyes. Use your eyes to hear what's being expressed in non-verbal ways. See with your ears. Yung binanggit ko kanina. See the interest. See the cares and concern. So as to build trust. But hear with your eyes. Hear with your eyes. Be observant. Like for example, if you're talking with somebody and you notice he or she is looking at her or his watch, perhaps it's time to say, I've taken so much of your time. I'm sorry. Perhaps we could talk about it later on. Thank you very much for the time you give me. Pero kung sinabi, hindi, at tinignan ko lang kung anong oras kasi nag-enjoy ako. Then, go on. Why not? Pero pag nakita mo halimbawa na pinapapalakpak na niya ang sandals niya, lalo't babae itong kaharap mo. Listen. And next time, next presentation, we'll talk about body language. So that you learn to listen with your eyes. Anong ibig sabihin niya pag naganan siya? Anong ibig sabihin kaya niya pag nakabot siya ng ulo? 
let's let's talk about it next time. Kasi, you have to also to learn to listen with your eyes. Parang ganito. If you're a speaker, that's why I find it difficult now to make presentations because I cannot see you. I don't know whether you're still interested. But given the chance that we are doing it in a conference hall, pero by this time, I might stop. Lalo na kung nakita kung tulog na kayo lahat. But if I see you nodding your head, I see you raising your hand and asking questions, then perhaps, mas mabubuhayin pa. Ganun din. Here are some listening traits. And, uh, sorry, medyo malabo ata. But, anyway, perhaps I could post it later on. Na mahalaga ito. So, here are some exercises that you could do to improve your likability. Especially in in getting it done in conversation. First is getting real, your basic attitude. This time, in a face-to-face -face conversation. So, ask a friend or family member to help you outline at least five traits or habits you have that make you appear unfriendly. Start taking notes on the interests of your current brothers or sisters or friend. And look for ways that you can show interest in similar activities, especially with them. O kung may pinoprospect ka, try to see ano bang interest niya na pwede akong pumasok sa mundo na interesado siya para mapansin niya ako. Find ways to engage people you previously spent much time with. Salamat sa quarantine. You now have time for your family. And perhaps it's time to explore the richness and beauty of your family. Kaya lang nakakalungkot din yan because you'll be staying in your own community. Bakit? Baka you become more interested sa mga kapitbahay mo at mga dating kababata at yung pinoprospect mo sa trabaho o kung nasaan man, makalimutan mo na. So, talk to two people you have never real conversation with. Write down three things about each person you did not know. You know, mga kapatid ko, mahalaga pag minsan na, yun nga, yung spotting lang. So that, the moment you meet again, by showing interests on matters he or she values, umasa ka. It creates connection. Like for example, the next time we meet, magchichismisan tayo, of course, I'm very much interested with your life. Yung ikukwento mo sa akin, Father, ganito na yung paglalakbay ko and this what happened with my life. Oh, I'm very interested with that. But, you could, we could also talk of things that perhaps would deepen our connection. Like, for example, let's talk about pipe smoking. Let's talk about my collections. We could talk about, we said, okay, then, theological matters, psychological matters. Pero, the moment you open these things and we have a good conversation of it, umasa ka. Yung likability mo sa akin, tumataas. Ganun na nagagawa noon. Kaya, Ano bang, abawa, just as an exercise, eh, supposing you want to connect with me, try to spot the things that interest me. And the moment we meet, let's talk about it. You open it, and I tell you, huh, it will be a great time. And write down three things that make you angry on a daily basis. And how you can turn these angry moments, growth moments. Kasi, Bakit natin kinikilala yung mga bagay na laging nakakaiyabot sa atin na nakakapagpaputok ng butsi natin? Kasi by recognizing them and naming them and being responsible to this burst of, outburst of emotions, we can control them and manage them. Hindi yung kung kailan sumabog ito, sumabog ka na rin, at dahil dito, 
hindi mo nang inaasahan, nakasakit ka na ng kapwa mo, o kung hindi man sila nasaktan, nag-iwang ka sa kanila ng maling pagkakilala. Impression. So, opening that conversation, our last topic in getting it on, misa ng pinakamahirap talaga ay magsimula. Ang hirap talaga. Lalo na't hindi mo pa siya ganong kakilala. Kaya dito napakahalaga ang dalhin mo sa puso mo ang diwa ng isang bata. Full of curiosity. The important thing is not to stop questioning. There's a reason why we are often curious. Because with curiosity, it's not just about improving our understanding and learnings in life. But at times, it is a way of connecting with the other with the other person or the other soul. So, first is personal curiosity. Folks are usually about as happy as they make their minds up to be. So you have to make up your mind to be happy. Because if you are happy, I tell you, a lot of people will be very curious about you. What makes this person happy? Kaya maraming lalapit sa yung tao sa simpleng dahil gusto ko rin lumigaya na tulad niya. Pangalwa, to be successful in meeting other people, you need to have a wide range of interest and knowledge to draw from. Knowledge nowadays is cheap. The only thing that blocks your knowledge base is laziness, your attitude about learning. Why? I said cheap. You have YouTube University. Kaya pag sinabi nung, nung, kwan, nung prospect mo eh, he or she loves cooking, nariyan ang YouTube University. Pwede mo rin sabihin sa kanya, kaya ko rin. Ito yung kaya kong luto eh. At ipatikin mo sa kanya. Then you now have a conversational piece. Cooking. Nariyan ang Google College. Go ahead, use them. They're free. And read a lot of books. Because people love well-rounded person. Well-rounded person are likable. People who are inherently attracted, both socially and sexually, or are attracted people, commonly possesses a wider world experience and knowledge. Yung pagkay nag-usap tungkol dito, kaya mong sumabay sa kanya. Or, kung hindi mo mangganap na alam, alam mo kung paano magtanong. Di ba? Ganun din. Curiosity might have to kill the cat, but I tell you, it never killed the cur- ah, conversation. Marami pwedeng pag-usapan. Start by being curious. Initiate conversation by being curious about the fundamental is fundamental in building valuable relationship because curiosity creates connection. I mentioned it already. Remember this. People love to talk. And if you allow a person to talk and you listen to that person, your likable points goes up to that person. So, open up. Try to use open-ended questions that are not answerable by yes or no. Make them explain. Allow them to illustrate to you, explain to you what interests them. Ito, paborito ko ito. Gamitin ko. Gusto ko magpaligay ng manang? Dalwa. Kumustahin ko yung apo niya at yan ibang kukwento na na lahat ng bagong natutunan ng kanyang apo. At ang pangalwa, tanongin mo sila tungkol sa kanilang manugang. Ko, oh, yan ang isunsulong na reklamo. At pag yun ay nakapagreklamo na sa iyo, magsaya na ito. Ah, I tell you. So, there are a lot of general, generic personal inquiry. What do you do? What do you think of this weather? About this quarantine? Ilan ang apo mo? 
us their opinion about how the government is handling this uh, this pandemic or ano masasabi mo tungkol dito etc etc maraming pwedeng pag-usapan ang mahalaga masimulan dahil pag nagsimula nagtatanong ka at hinaya mo magsalita gumaganda tumopogi ka sa mata niya because lot of people not just loves to talk but every heart craves to be listened to because it says I am valuable get in there you could pose hypothetical questions Halimbawa, may best friend ka. At pareho pa kayong single na dalawa. Ano kaya tanungin mo siya? Excuse me? Ano kaya tanungin mo siya? Tanungin mo siya kung ano kaya tayong dalawa ang magkatuluyang sa chat. Hindi natin alam kung saan maaari tumungo ang ganyang pag-uusap. Pero nagpapakita ito sa atin ng isang magandang pagkakataon na magsimula ng isang usapan na mausisa mo, baka magkaseryosohan. Seek advice. If somebody's older, girls, this is very powerful. You want to tap on a man's protective instinct? especially his paternal instinct, ask, seek advice. Gumaganda ka sa mukha niya. Sabi ko sa iyo. Sa mata niya, rather. Kaya, tomorrow, let's talk about, yun nga, body language. How to recognize body language and through them, by listening through your eyes, you come to know the person, especially those things they put, find it difficult to put into words. Again, this is Father Dale Anthony Q. Baretoko. Thank you for staying tuned. Subscribe. Huh? Click the subscribe button below. Even the notification, notification bell. So that at least, pag sinipag ang inyong tatay, may popost dito. And hopefully, pag tumagal pa itong quarantine, masusundan at masusundan pa natin ito. Dahil hangad ko ang dumigaya ka, ang mibig at ibigin. Tunay, ito si Father Dale na sabi, darating yan. Especially kung friendly ka. Bye-bye!